Nick and Jones, Nick the, Jones. The, the quarterback oh, out of Ball State. The quarterback yeah. out of Ball State. So they did go to the, the secondary position here. Yeah. I mean, it's another swing and a deep cornerback class. Yeah. And – I, if I, I mean, if I remember, if I remember correctly, Nick Jones was close to getting a write-up for us in the KCS. And I believe guy. he was just on the outskirts of the cornerback position right. of sneaking into into write-up range coming out of Ball State, and I think, I think actually it was a little bit of um, athletic testing that just bumped him it out of it a it little did. bit. Yeah, not going to be a guy that's going to be confused for like a tier one C-bat sort of guy. Ran a 4'5", 40, 34 and a half inch vertical jump. Broad was okay. It was 10 and a half. 20 yard was actually 4'3", 4, not terrible in yeah. that regard. But, you know, six foot, long arms, 32 and 3 8 inch arms, 189 pounds. Like, I, he's got long arms, physicality there. I this is going to be a preferential thing. I think you're going to be looking at a guy like this and saying, hey, this just this guy just fits some of the traits that Steve Spagnuolo yeah. covets of a, of a guy there, not taking a gamble on athleticism maybe like they did with some of the earlier picks. This is just a guy that makes sense for what Spags likes to do. The Chiefs went all defense on day three. They did. Yes, they did. Uh, Nick Jones uh, was a Shrine Bowl participant, yes, if was. I remember correctly, yes, too. So the Chiefs have leaned heavily into the Shrine Bowl players as well. <laughs> Excuse yeah. me. Yeah, no, that is the uh, that is the route they have gone here on day three. It's just yeah, they've gone back to the Shrine Bowl spot. They had a lot of success with that last year with obviously the Isaiah Pacheco pick, and they're going back there now. So well, it'll be interesting to see. I wonder if this is another special teams pick too. It is. He's actually yeah. blocked a kick and he blocked a punt yeah. at, at Ball State, and so uh, he got a lot, got plenty of uh, got plenty of snaps as a special teamer. So yeah, makes a ton of sense here you see him actually returning a kick here on these highlights so it might be a more special teams focus but the physical profile actually fits and i think the other thing i we saw him a little bit at the shrine game the other thing that we know about him he's got quick feet like yeah I, he actually has pretty quick feet not just like oh hey you're a you know, big dude you're gonna be plotting you're gonna be slow there's a couple of treats there, even if the athletic testing overall isn't like an elite, elite level. Yeah, I think, oh, go, go. I was just saying, he's just a, he's a corner. He's got, he's got pretty long arms. Um, if I, if I remember correctly, yeah, the position, yeah, th so yep. long arms. Yeah. He does a good job getting his hands on receivers and just kind of keeping them there. And then he's had some ability to play inside and outside in the slot. Yeah. There's definitely a route that he develops and becomes a player that can, you know, fill in as a depth player or a cornerback for a team. I, again, I feeling pretty good as a special teams move it's a guy yeah. that comes out there he's willing to give it his all he's always able to or willing to earn a spot and do stuff like that he needs to keep adding weight he's pretty skinny for his size so yeah add some weight but i think he's kind of another special teams pick here 10 inch hands that's just a big huge hands uh it shows up he's, he's a little bit of a ball hack has some production at the catch point yeah so, uh yeah. 32 and 3 8 inch arms 10 inch uh 10 inch hands and I think this, if you're looking at roster construction and his path to success, Nazi Johnson. Yeah. Might be, I mean, they might be, they might be competing a little bit here a, for that special some, teams role. Taking some swings on some special teams role to try and get them to also fit within this defense. I do think that, that he fits a little bit more inside the structure of Steve Spagnuolo's defense, maybe than Nazi Johnson sure. does. I, I, not that Nazi Johnson doesn't, but. Just again, I the agree length, with that. the tackling ability, yeah. and a little bit of ability to play at the catch point. I mean, those are all things that Steve Spagnuolo prioritizes. No, ab no, absolutely, and I think that is that's why this pick is going to make it. I mean, we're, we're talking about day three pick here, right? It's sure. uh, so much. This Late stuff is three. about. Yeah. This is so much about who impressed a specific scout or positional coach, and what kind of very specific role they can fit because. He didn't cross any of our lists, and we're talking about nah. guys we'd like to see them take, and that's fine, right? That's absolutely fine because this is a player that somebody inside the room is pounding the table for saying, no, no, this is the guy that we can't risk going into you know, the undrafted free agent pool and having to debate with them, whereas Rakeem Jarrett, uh, you know, Sean Tucker, still available right now. Maybe you can still sign them, right? Yeah. Maybe those oh, guys yeah. are still signable. Nick Jones is someone they just wanted to make sure they got. So it, from that aspect, somebody somewhere has a plan on how to use them. Uh 14 passes defensed in 2022. Yes. For Nick Jones. Uh, that's a nice stat for him. It is. Good a on bit him. Of ball production. Yeah. And, I, you know, I don't think there's a bad, I don't think it's a bad philosophy to try to um, invest in high value positions late in the draft, too. Yeah. Like, just take the high positional value spots. 
cornerback. The Chiefs have had some success going to the well at the cornerback position in recent memory this late in the draft. Yeah. I mean, literally last year. Uh, so keep doing that. Just th- th- take your swings on some of these spots because you never know. You'll land a Jalen Watson from time to time. For sure. For sure. I mean, th- this is a it's a good pick. I, I, I do like this one. Uh, really paid attention to the Shrine game. Uh, the Chiefs did. Came out yeah. and put a, put a big focus on the Shrine. So that's really cool. You know, we, we obviously didn't get to talk specifically we with not. Nick Jones while we were down there, unfortunately, or you'd be all watching the interview there. You'd <laughs> be watching it. Yeah, you'd be We would have been watching it immediately. Yes. But, I mean, a, a player that certainly, when we were down there, wide receivers had a little bit of trouble at, at times with some of these corners, and he was yeah. one of them that, that actually stood out a little bit, but not one of those guys that I was looking at and saying, okay, that guy's clearly better than a Joshua Williams, a Jalen sure. Watson, a thing like that, but add it to the room. Figure out what happens. Yeah, no, exactly. That's what it is. You're adding, you're adding a guy, a young guy, to a room that has some pretty good depth, and you know, you're kind of hoping in year one, maybe he proves to be so good on special teams that you can't keep him off your 53 man roster like Nazi Johnson was last year. If not, you slide into the practice squad. You have some more youth yep. and stuff coming in to uh, back up and be depth in the future in the secondary. Blocking kicks is difficult to do. That's true. And the fact that he's been able to do that in multiple facets of special teams multiple times matters. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, Dave Toe could go pound the table for that. 